Hi, John Straub here. Recently I was asked, what does a building scientist do in the middle of a pandemic? And so I'm going to make a little bit of a video to show you what I might be doing. Um, so I'm pretty lucky in that uh, I've got decent internet connectivity and I can do a lot of the work that I normally do by internet and uh, interminable WebEx, GoToMeetings, Teams, Zoom, etc. Uh, but that doesn't mean the physical research stops. Uh, if you're uh, lucky, like I am, you've got a big enough backyard, you can actually do some research, good, useful building science research in your own backyard. So I'm going to go show you some of what we do. So one of the things I have in my backyard is a natural exposure test facility. This one's actually a mobile one in that we can actually move it to different locations or rotate it into different orientations. It is actually on four tires. What we've been doing in the last 30 years has been research around how building enclosures work by using field exposure, test huts, test houses, etc. In this case, there's only four walls on the north side that you're looking at and four walls on the south side and the other side and also two test roofs. The benefits of natural exposure test huts is that they put the enclosure element or peak material or piece through the same kind of intensity, durations and frequency of environmental loads. You don't have to think about what is the right amount of UV radiation? How much does wind buffeting matter? Does temperature expansion and contraction really affect this product or not? Because you put it in the real world and then you can expose it. So although you only get a year or two in these studies because you have time limited studies of course, you can use uh, your lots of uh, instrumentation and measurements of various types to learn a lot more about how the product performs or the assembly performs and use that to do a much better job of extrapolating out to future performance. So in this test hut, the north side is exposed to a lot of wind and driving rain and also because the north it doesn't get a lot of sun to dry it out. On the other side, the south side of this hut, it's actually protected by another building, adjoining building, but uh, from wind, but it's fully exposed to the sun. And so this makes it uh, the warmer and drier side. And our experience on doing numbers of test huts, I think we've got about 20 uh, in the last 30 years we've done, is that the orientation really does matter. So the difference between north and south, east and west are really quite significant and much more important than uh, geography. You can get easily one to two full climate zones difference depending on whether you're on the north side or the south side. So let's take a look on the inside. So this is the front entrance of the test hut. So let's go in and see what a, a test hut looks like on the inside. So I hope you weren't expecting anything too exciting because it's not. Here on the other wall from the entry point, we have all of our data collection system. This is a data acquisition system, connects signals from sensors uh, into computer data that can be then transferred to laptops for analysis. So if we look over, uh, this is the north facing walls uh, and then the other side we have our south facing walls. And if we look above, you'll see we actually have test roofs as well, two of them in this test hut. Here in the middle is a large tank of water connected to our homemade humidifier, which is important to maintain humidity levels of what we want to do and test in the middle of winter particularly. Now, you'll also see over here these walls that uh, inside the wall, hidden away, will be a whole bunch of sensors. Temperature, humidity, moisture content, and that's what we're mostly using to measure. Sometimes heat flux transducers to see the rate of heat flow. And also, if we look over here, you might see that these tubes are labeled and they are, are calibrated mistakes. We often test assemblies, roofs, walls, basements, with a leak built in. But we start off operating the wall normally or the roof, 
and then we inject a known quantity of water at a known location and observe how does that wall system or roof system or basement system respond to those types of leaks. And so by having the as it's perfect operation and then having another shot of how does it work when it's wet, also we figure out how does it respond if there's a leak in the fall, the spring, or the summer because each of those types of weather conditions can be quite different. Here you can see the weather station, at least the wind monitor of the weather station that we have on the roof of the test hut and you can also see the very wide open exposure that this hut will have for when it is windy uh, and rainy. On the other side of the test hut uh, there's actually a building in the way, a barn, which is nicely located to block essentially most of the wind but almost none of the sun. I mean there's direct sun on the south side all the time. So behind me you can see the four test walls that are part of the south exposure of the test hut currently and you know the outside again looks no more interesting or distinctive than the inside because these particular test walls the interest is not the exterior cladding it is layers like insulation and air and water control layers on the inside and so that's why from the outside many times these buildings don't show too much and that's because most of the interesting things inside building enclosures are actually what's hidden away. I know most people like to focus on the interior finishes whether they be tiles or hardwood floors or the exterior finishes such as the cladding whether it be terracotta or stainless steel or high density laminates but in terms of function a lot of how a modern wall functions is entirely dependent on what's inside. And that's what these test huts let us test by measuring them, understanding their performance, and then providing improvements to design and also limitations on where and when you should be using them. Well, I sure hope that some people found that interesting and that you can learn to lounge around and enjoy what spring has to offer. <laughs>